Welcome to the MRX Bison, a rifle made by Black Creek Labs, a bolt action rifle, and a budget bolt action rifle at that. This rifle costs, without the sight or the grip, the rifle costs $1,000. In your $1,000, you get the rifle, which has an aluminum chassis. You get one magazine 762 by 39 is what this one is chambered in you get one muzzle brake you get a magpul stock a magpul moek grip and the best of all a trigger tech trigger remington 700 two and a half to five pound adjustable trigger this rifle weighs 6.9 pounds according to their website now, it won't let me download their spec sheet, so it might actually be a little bit less, a little bit more. I don't know whether 6.9 pounds is referring to the 12.5 inch or 16.5 inch, which you can get either in this rifle. You can get 5.56, 300 blackout, and 7.62x39. Now, the 7.62x39 has uses Stanag 7.62 magazines. However, the 5.56 version uses Stan Egg magazines and a proprietary Magwell that uses 20 round 5.56 magazines. They do not have that on the 7.62 version. So the highest capacity you can get in 7.62 is 10 rounds with XCR pistol magazines. Now, the magazines are the first point. That you will notice as soon as you insert a magazine that is not very nice. Now they go in just fine. The magwell as you can see is very beveled. You're not going to miss anything. Locks in but look at this. That magazine is wiggling and when you shake the rifle you feel it. If that is in your truck tractor on your back you are really going to notice that, and that is going to be annoying. In fact, it was so annoying that I decided I had to put hockey tape on it. Hockey tape just solves everything, it seems. So you put it in, lock it in place. It moves a bit, but nowhere near as much. The sound is nowhere near as bad. What you lose is the ability for the magazine to drop free. That's not possible anymore. And use another XCR magazine with a bit of hockey tape on it. Put it in. This one is a bit more stiff to get in, but this one doesn't move at all. And you have to pull to bring it out. So that's kind of shit, but that's just the way it is. Now, this review, before I go further... This review will be different. I'm not doing a thousand round review on this, and I'm not doing a first shots video on this. What will happen will be a overview video, what you're watching now, and then a short review video, which will happen whenever I am able to post it. Now I'm going to do two configurations. I'm going to do this configuration as you see it, red dot, foregrip, muzzle brake, stock, and everything. And then I'm going to do another configuration with a bipod and a scope that will be testing the accuracy and I'll have a couple different ammo types. For this one with the red dot I'll be using uh, just Chinese surplus because budget rifle, budget ammo. Now one thing I need to mention that I find a bit annoying is the muzzle brake. It's probably a good muzzle brake, but it also is going to be really annoying to anyone else if you're shooting this undercover um, or next to anyone at all, period. And when you're, if that's the case and you don't want to be an asshole, well, you can use something like this. This is a faux suppressor, but it's a linear compensator. Now, I would love to put this on for the scope bipod 
configuration, but I can't because I can't get this off. No matter how hard I try, I cannot get this damn break off. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about it. Maybe nothing. Maybe I'll just have to be that asshole for one range day, but I can't get it off. It should be good for the red dot site configuration, though. And another thing I want to mention is the pistol grip. Now, it's an MOEK, which is not for everyone. It's fine for a bolt action rifle. I'm more okay with it here than I was on the Renegade or the 181. But look at this. You can see it. The trigger guard and the pistol grip are not lined up, and you feel this on your middle finger when you're holding it. If your hand is not positioned perfectly, this digs in, and this is sharp. Um, it's not sharp. It's not going to cut you, but it's sharp and uncomfortable, and there's nothing you can do about it. Unless you put hockey tape, which I may or may not do, or you get a different grip that is wide enough to fit this stance. As well, the handguard is well built. This entire rifle is well built. There's no creaking or anything. The only creaking was with the stock, and I put a bit of hockey tape, and now it doesn't move. But the stock has suffers from the same issue, or the chassis, I should say. It's not sharp, in fact, at, like, at all. You, there's no way you would cut a thing on this. And you can see it's a bit chamfered, but it's not pleasant to hold. It feels like it digs into your hand, which, if you're using this as like a truck gun or something, that really sucks. Um, I would basically say you need a foregrip of some kind, a pistol grip or an angled grip because or a vertical grip or not a pistol grip rather because it's just it's uncomfortable and not in a I mean uncomfortable isn't good in almost any way but like it's uncomfortable in that it's usable but it's so annoying um I wish that was different but there's nothing you can do about it um now I've just put, uh, it's M-Lock all around. I've just put an M-Lock little piece for the bipod here. And the bolt, let me get to it here. So it is a 60 degree throw. You press this button right here and you pull out. And that is how you get to the bolt. It's a three lug 762 bolt. Now, one thing that they fixed that I know they were having issues with before is light strikes. So, this is their solution. It is a little, this little plunger here that I, I suppose increases the weight of the firing pin, and it says it will uh, help with surplus slash crate ammunition. So I put that in right away because I'm going to be shooting surplus, and I don't want to have to waste a range day. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to get in, I'm not going to lie. This taking out the firing pin is, you need a vice. Um, you absolutely need a vice. But once you have it in the correct position, it's not too bad. And again, to put in the bolt, simply slide in here, push in the button, pull down, and there you go. You have yourself your bolt. Now, one thing I will say about the bolt handle, it's a good size, it's easy to reach. The only thing that I'm knocking against it is the push up. The gun is already cocked, and it does take a fair amount of force. And not in a good way. Like if you were trying to get, say, two rapid shots fired up, 
the amount of force that you're exuding to push the bolt up would throw off your aim and you'd have to make sure you were re-aimed right where you want to shoot because otherwise you are going to miss the good thing is that the uh, actual pull back is very smooth drops right out pushes right back in that is excellent now for magazines when you have a magazine inserted it is a bit of a hiccup and you push down the manual even says make your movements deliberate if you're using the Stanag magazines. But the bolt is smooth. Even on the way back, it's relatively smooth. And if you're doing it with deliberate force, it's not bad. Now, one last thing I want to mention is use case for this um i know people will some people will be using this in competition like two or three gun but that's not really what this is for i think other rifles like the mra renegade or the troy par if you're going the manual action route would be better for that so the reason that this rifle will be getting uh different reviews and I actually don't know if I've shown, mentioned, the other configuration will be bipod scope I, and scope. I don't know if I mentioned it. My brain is fogged. This is the second time I've word, I've done this because I had audio issues the first time. Um, most people will be using this as a truck gun, a ranch rifle, maybe even a hiking rifle in some instances. Uh, or just a gun you take to the range occasionally. Maybe just want a bolt action that shoots cheap ammo because you want to use a bolt action. Or you want to, you know, maybe your range doesn't go out very far like mine, goes to 250 meters. And, you know, that's perfect for this gun, a 12 and a half inch 7.62. So just temper expectations for the review. This is more of a lighthearted initial impressions get to know the gun than a durability test like I do with my other reviews. That's it for the heads up. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll answer my uh, any questions in the comments as best as possible. And just a final thank you for supporting the channel. I'm almost at 500 subscribers, which is crazy. I it's not a large number in the YouTube gigantic sense but I feel like I've gotten there fairly quickly um hopefully I can get to a thousand and I can start making some ad revenue off of this and then I can finally start pumping out more videos more frequently to cover the cost of ammo because really that's all I care about I don't care if I'm making money from this if the cost is even to make videos I'll just keep doing it. That would be absolutely fantastic. And I could bring more reviews of cool guns for the Canadian market because it's not a lot of videos on the Canadian market specifically in what we want. Anyway, that's it for this video. Have a good day.